James Milan, and this is a uh, brand new and probably fairly transitory series uh, that we are coming up with called Town Meeting Matters. And what we're doing here is just uh, helping town meeting members here in 2020 in a cr crazy and truncated town meeting season uh, to, uh, to streamline their preparation. And we're talking to a number of the decision makers and folks right at the, at the heart of the budget matters that need to be decided. Uh, by town meeting uh, in a single session upcoming here on June 15th. Joining us today is Alan Tosti, the longtime chair of our finance committee here in Arlington and a frequent guest of ours. Al, always good to see you. Hope you are weathering all this craziness as well as possible. Thanks. Good to be here. So far, so good. Appreciate that fact and you're, and you're joining us as always. Um, so, obviously, everybody is aware that this is a budget season and a town meeting session, unlike any other, uh, just like the rest of this spring. Um, why don't you just kind of start to set the scene for us in terms of what, what it is that you guys have been dealing with and how it is that you have, uh, you know, you, you, you have altered the plans in order to reflect that? Okay, certainly. Uh, Finance Committee was on the way towards its usual procedure of, uh, in fact, it almost finished it uh, in February and March towards approaching town meeting in April. We had done all our work. We had examined the budgets. We had the Warren articles. We had hearings. We did all the work and uh, we're ready to go. And then the world came to an end as we know it. I, I sort of described this in the Finance Committee's chair's report um, that's online now. So um, the Finance Committee report is online on the town website under town meeting reports to committee. So I'd urge people, you can go online and download it now. There will be hard copy going out on Tuesday from the Selectman's office of the FinCom report and all the other hard copies. Uh, but the report is available for you now. Uh, and we will, uh, just let me interject for a second that we will be making regular reference to that throughout this conversation. So right. just be, be aware you can find the entire document as Al was just saying. So that, um, and, and sort of towards the end of March, everything froze. You know, we, we, we found we couldn't go ahead. Usually I we would go ahead in, in mid-April based upon the House Ways and Means Committee's numbers and finalize the report and go to, go to print. And we'd be ready the first night of town meeting in uh, the end of April. Uh, but when this happened, everything just sort of froze. We weren't sure what the revenue numbers are. Uh, the the, both the state and the local have taken a hit in revenues. Um, the state more than the local. We, we got hit in, in meals taxes and hotel motel um, uh, on those. But the state gets it, of course, big time in uh, income tax. So um, the, the, uh, we put the Long Range Planning Committee, which sort of over... Uh, does a lot of discussion about this. Um, we're, we had several meetings to figure out, okay, where do we go from here? And it was decided at that point uh, that we'd go to town meeting. And of course the moderator's involved um, and it's, it's his decisions to make. So he postponed the meeting from the end of April to the end of May, and then he postponed the meeting till June 15th. So right now uh, town meeting is scheduled for June 15th on the Pierce Field behind the high school, um, using every procedure uh, that we can do to keep everybody safe. Um, and uh, my understanding is you're gonna be having the moderator on board. So I'll let him talk about how the actual town meeting um, will go and the procedures to keep everybody safe. Um, at that point, uh, Long Range Planning Committee, I, I pushed, um, we need to make some cuts. Whatever's gonna happen, um, it's, it's not gonna be good. Um, we, we don't have a precise feeling now, but we can't go and hire people in June and July and then lay them off in December. That just makes no sense. Um, so uh, the Long Range Planning Committee accepted that we'll cut the increase, that's very important. We're not cutting the school budget and the town budgets by 
we're cutting the increase in the school budget and the town budget by 10%. Uh, so everybody agreed on that. We have some small Warren article uh, cuts and uh, uh, we, we put together the plan on that. The town manager took all the new people, new hires out of his budget. And actually his cuts come to about 20% of the increase. The superintendent uh, and the um, uh, deputy for finance uh, got together and they made some reductions too. And all of this is on appendix E in the finance committee report. Um, all the uh, new reductions. We also took a look at some use of reserves. And so uh, we've done some substantial use of reserves there, uh, but we felt we needed to make some cuts too. I went to uh, uh, the finance committee uh, last Monday and uh, we had our uh, finance committee report uh, heard from the manager and the superintendent and the finance committee voted uh, unanimously to support all of the changes in the, in the budget from what we did in March. Uh, and again, that's in Appendix E, and it's ex the process is sort of explained in the chairman's report. So right now, the report is out there, along with the Selectmen and Redevelopment and other reports, CPA. So what we're asking town meeting members to do is go online, download your report, download the report, <coughs> go through it, uh, and ask questions. Any questions you have, please send them to the moderator. Um, his, his email is online. Send them to the moderator. He will direct the questions to the appropriate person. He'll get back and then he'll send it on the whole town meeting email list. So everybody will see the question and everybody will see the answer. What we're trying to do is we're trying to finish up an entire town meeting in one night when we usually go four to eight sessions. So that's why all the finance, all the uh, selectman articles and all the redevelopment board articles are postponed to the fall. Uh, we'll do the finance articles. Um, so we're hoping to get as many questions out of the way as possible. So um, let me let me ask you a couple of things before we, we move further. A couple of things in, in all that you were just saying that uh, spring to mind for me. One is really an aside, but let me ask you, um, is this, one of those rare instances with everything that has happened um, with the pandemic and the specific effects of this massive economic lockdown. Um, is this one of those rare instances where our disproportionate uh, income in this town, uh, and by that I mean the, the, a theme we have hit on countless times of having 95, 96% of our revenues coming from property taxes, instead of commercial uh, base. Is this one of those rare instances where that's actually working in our favor because we're able to retain more uh, of our income than it, less of it is affected by this commercial shutdown? I suppose it might be, but our commercial industrial section is so small that you know whether we get 6%, 4% or 7% is, is not gonna make a lot of difference. Um, the total taxes that we can assess is the same and the growth is the same um, the two and a half percent we might be impacted more in revenues from new growth new construction um but it, it's not going to make that much of a difference now okay all right and then more pertinently to our conversation here um the cuts that you were describing and that being reductions in the increases in the budget as you were saying so uh, budgets that were going to be increased, let us say, by, let, let's just pick a figure, $500, it's going to be 450 because it's 10% less than, than, than that, right? Um, That's correct. And, and so, for example, the manager was going to be increasing about a million two, um, and he's cut 261,000. So he's cut about 22% of his increase. The schools were going to increase at about 4.6 million. Uh, they cut 460,000. So they cut about 10%. And then we trimmed a few Warren articles um, and increased uh, reserves or didn't appropriate money into reserves. Okay. So, uh, and then further, I mean, part of the town manager's cuts, as you said, is that he has frozen his hiring or, or, or is not moving ahead with hiring, making some new hires. That's obviously going to be disappointing and have an impact on those people. But as I consider what you were just uh, what you've described as the reaction uh, to these, this, this uh, dramatic reduction in revenue, um, that 
are you are you pleased i guess are you content with the with limiting the the damage so to speak um in this way because it sounds to me like that's a you know a better outcome than we might have worried or feared um you know given again the the fact that we are you know this this has been an unprecedented reduction in money coming into coffers it's um we're, we're basing this on uh, the manager's best guess best estimate from talking with state officials and other local officials we're basing it on a 15 percent reduction in local aid from what the governor proposed in january um so that that's a chunk of money uh between the cuts and use of reserves we are going if if that holds true we'll go into it with a balanced budget for fiscal 21. Um, that's better than I would have hoped uh, a, a month ago. Um, so I am pleased the way it's going. Um, the, the, the problem is when, when you look at, um, I know you're going to have Sandy Poor on, and if he goes through the five-year plan, we've still got some big deficits out in 2024. They're too, they're too big. We need to reduce those deficits some more. So that um, um, we'll, we'll still, I believe, have some reductions. But by not hiring people and then firing them, you know, we're starting off from a better place. Mm -hmm. And uh, you make a, you raise an excellent point. We will be talking to Deputy Town Manager Sandy Pooler as part of this series as well. And he will take us through, as you were saying, the kind of five years out, because as you just pointed out, there will be ramifications, clear and yep. dramatic ramifications for the budget going out beyond 2021. So let's celebrate the fact that the news could have been worse for 2021, assuming things move forward, but understanding that there's still pain to come. Yes, I, I, there will be some hard decisions. Um, nobody knows where this pandemic is going to go um, and what the ramifications, both health-wise and financially, um, but I don't think it's going away anytime soon. So as town meeting members prepare for, uh, for, for June 15th in this kind of marathon session, which a lot needs to get done in a relatively short amount of time, I guess there are some, a certain number of articles that will be, be presented to them that town meeting members, longtime town meeting members would be very familiar with because they see them every year and pass them every year pretty quickly. Is that right? That's right. They're, we, they're sort of in two groups. Um, one of them, I mean, in general, and the moderator, if you have him, uh, can go with this to more detail, but um, I think he wants to get rid of the measure of barks and the assistant moderator right off the bat, just bang. And then um, we'll deal with the selectman articles or the redevelopment articles within a, hopefully a couple of minutes and they're gone. We'll deal with those in the fall. And then we'll go into uh, the two selectman articles, which are community development block grant money and the revolving funds. And after that, uh, we're going to focus on really four areas. Um, the town budgets, the capital budget, and the water and sewer borrowing articles, because they require two thirds vote, Minuteman, and the CPA. So those will be dealt with separately. Um, uh, the uh, Minuteman uh, should have a presentation up on the website, if not now, very soon, within a few hours. Uh, CPA's up there, uh, town budgets uh, and the capital budget are up there in the finance committee report. So after we do those four uh, main issues, then we'll take the consent agenda with sort of everything else. And uh, unless town meeting votes to take something out of the consent agenda, uh, We'll, we'll uh, deal with those all at once with one vote, one more vote at the end, Article 77, and we're done. Okay, so That's let me, I, I probably have asked you this in a previous interview <laughs> at some point, but let me just clarify that a consent agenda basically is just a, a bundle of various items that can all just get a single vote because again, this, they're familiar, they are repetitive, um, it's, it's, it's just a, it's just mundane business, I guess, that needs to be taken care of. Is that, is that accurate? Right. It, it's articles that we vote on virtually every year. Uh, we pass every year. Very rarely do they have any discussion or debate. Um, and, uh, um, 
and therefore hopefully those can all get done. Okay, and it's a, it seems like a good idea in terms of structuring uh, the session uh, to do the way that you said, which is, you know, the issues that need to be, if there are any that need to be wrestled with, those come initially, and then at the end you can just say, okay, consent agenda, let's just zoom right through, right through this now. Right. I mean, um, the selectmen do it all the time. I, I, I assume the school committee does it. Uh, so you're, you're not discussing and voting on 20 different items that just that process of loan, just the process of it, you know, could take 20 minutes to do, whereas, um, you know, it could take two minutes instead. Mm -hmm. And so of the four major items that you were mentioning, um, are there uh, any that stand out because they're gonna be, I, I don't know, just tougher to deal with? Or do you feel like, yes, each one will take a certain amount of time so everybody understands, but you'll be able to move those through those pretty quickly and uniformly? I think the CPA, uh, the Community Preservation Act Committee, um, has knocked out anything new. So all they've got in there, and again, that's on the website, <coughs> all they have there are uh, uh, continuing projects. So their projects town meeting is seen before, this is a continuation of those projects, um, and that will be it. So hopefully the CPA will not be too bad. Um, Minuteman, um, you know, they're into their new school, uh, their enrollment is pretty good. Um, it's still a lot of money. Um, th there's a presentation there. The superintendent will be there in case there's questions, but hopefully we can get all those questions done ahead of time. Uh, the capital budget, I don't think there's anything particularly controversy. Uh, and the town budgets, hopefully th that we can go through those. Um, and, uh, but you know, who knows what yeah. town meeting wants to talk about. Right, never know. Um, and when you say town budgets, those are the budgets from all the respective different departments in town. That's correct. Okay. And they're considered as a, they're, they're, they're considered each individually. Is that right? Or? Well, what, what uh, the town moderator has done over the last five, six years is uh, we open up the town budgets and then the moderator lists the budget. Uh, budget number one finance committee pauses. Budget number two, selectman, pauses. If nobody says anything, he goes on, those become part of the consent agenda. If somebody yells out hold, then we have to go back and do that. So he goes all the way through all the budgets and let's say five budgets get held. Then we go back to those five budgets. Somebody asks a question, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, somebody asks a question, uh, gets answered or discussion. See, those we hope to get the questions answered ahead of time. So we're not taking care of 252 people, maybe getting bit by mosquitoes or um, <laughs> uh, whatever, uh, answering questions that could have already been answered and done. Um, and so then, that, that this whole- and After that, of, once we go through it, we vote the whole budget. Uh, sorry about that. This, so the whole, procedure of getting the questions in early um, is probably always advisable and always streamlines the process once town meeting is gathered. But in this particular case, even more important that town meeting members go ahead and do what you've already suggested, which is review these things as soon as they can, whatever questions they have, get them out there right away so that they can be resolved. Everybody gets to see that, as you said, and you're going in, therefore, to this session with a lot of that stuff already taken care of. That's correct. That's correct. That's our hope. Yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. I wonder what you're going to do about arranging the appropriate weather for that evening. Have you? Have well, you um, that at all? <laughs> that's an issue. We didn't have that in uh, when we were in the town hall, but the town hall was too small. We even thought of moving it to the high school auditorium, but it's still too small because people would have to. Even if you spread people out, people have to climb over each other um, to get to it. Uh, if you're outside, the risk is less because, right, there's a breeze, there's, there's uh, air flowing. Yep. And uh, we're going to strongly ask everybody to wear their masks. Um, and, uh, and hopefully we could reduce the danger to the town meeting and the other officials uh, who are there um, and, and move through it. Okay. Uh, and then hopefully return next year to our usual pattern. So
So a couple small questions and then we'll wrap things up. Um, one is, uh, my assumption is that the town budgets that you referred to before, they are all uh, part of the finance committee report as well? Yes. And um, how about amendments? Um, are amendments made to, um, you know, to business uh, such as you have to conduct on the 15th? Um, if so, how, how will they be handled? Well, uh, uh, the moderator and the town council have always asked that any amendments to any warrant articles or budgets be submitted ahead of time. So the moderator could first of all decide if they're within the scope of the article uh, and the uh, town council can make sure they're drafted in a proper form. I think that if anybody wants to make an amendment to the budget or amendment to a warrant article, um, that that's even more important now uh, that we get that done ahead of time. Uh, sometimes an amendment is made because somebody doesn't understand something uh, and maybe we can answer that question and the, and the person withdraws the amendment. Uh, but often the amendment's made because the person wants to have a discussion and make, make a point, uh, which is fine. That's, that's obviously legitimate. It's what they're there for. Um, but we're just trying to reduce the number of it the number of questions and the speed. So town meeting is not sitting there uh, waiting for town council to redraft an amendment uh, because it's done improperly. Mm -hmm. And the moderator is not trying to re read an amendment that uh, is borderline on the, uh, beyond the scope of the article, but he still has to read it and think about it. We don't want that to happen with 252 people waiting outside. Right. And our amendments, you know, I'm just not that clear on the amendment process, but um, is that something that would be basically handled between the person uh, proposing the amendment and the town moderator before, you know, again, before the session is held? Or is that also similar to the questions that you were saying before that are kind of, um, you know, made publicly and then responded to publicly and all the town meeting members have a chance to see them. Is that the same thing that happens with amendments? Um, I, I mean, uh, it would be the same thing as usual happens. We're just trying to get it done ahead of time. Okay. Um, to, to sort of speed the process, get the procedural stuff out of the way so town meeting can focus on the substance of an issue. And, uh, and then, of course, the amendment can be sent out to all the other town meeting members so that they actually see it and understand it. Um, so we avoid a lot of confusion again um, on the high school playing field. Got it. Got it. You know, um, I had a number of questions going into the session. They've all been answered, but I'm not a town meeting member. Is there anything that uh, that you imagine the town meeting members might st might need to learn that we haven't covered yet? Okay. Well, for example, um, the Appendix E, which has uh, the, the reductions approved by the Finance Committee and the Long Range Planning Committee, um, the town manager's ones and the school department ones are pretty straightforward. Um, again, they're 10% of the increase. Um, I made some re uh, we made some reductions in the uh, Warren articles. Um, I guess I recommended these. Uh, I went through any Warren article that is optional. Uh, that's over $25,000. I'm not going to go into uh, a, a committee that gets appropriated $2,000 and nickel and dime them, but anything over $25,000 I thought was serious. Um, so we, we reduced $5,000 from the arts and culture. Uh, again, it's a $35,000 budget. We went from 35 to 30 on the grounds that they spend things for outdoor activities like town day. Um, and they won't have to print things and, and hand things out. They won't have to rent a booth, things like that. Uh, so uh, did that. Uh, water bodies is appropriating 55,000. We cut that by 10,000. Um, that's largely because they have some carryover. So they have a fair amount of carryover. They could still do their job um, using more of the carryover. And then at some point, two or three years down, we, we might have to adjust that to get them back on, sh on, on uh, line. Uh, we cut 5,000 out of town day. Why? We're not having town day. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> and we cut the Harry Barber program, the $7,500, uh, largely because this, uh, this is a program for our senior citizens uh, can work in the town offices uh, and, and make a little extra money to pay their rent or taxes. 
um, it, it seems at this particular point of view, uh, having senior citizens uh, exposing themselves by being in town hall offices or offices in other uh, places uh, is not an appropriate thing to do. Um, and so uh, the, the human service was fine like that. So we, we trimmed and cut that. Um, we reduced the reserve fund by a little bit. Um, we uh, were not appropriating money into the long-term stabilization fund. Uh, we're using more overlay surplus um, so that we can draw down the surplus there over a period of years. And we're taking about $2 million and change out of the override stabilization fund to finally balance everything. Mm -hmm. So um, those changes, and again, it's in Appendix E, um, and we welcome any questions. Uh, that, if, if the 15% cut holds true, we'll have a balanced budget for 21. We'll still need to do more work down the road. The deficit in fiscal 24 is still too high. We don't want to have to go back to the people with a def deficit um, that's just too big. Um, appreciate you closing things out here. First of all, appreciate you, you know, working through that cough of yours, which I can, I can tell is, you know, it's, it's, it's been nagging you throughout uh, the interview, but uh, you, you, you stuck with it and we appreciate that. Uh, but also the specificity with which you just went through a number of items in the decision, the, the reasoning behind uh, choosing those particular departments or budgets and, and reducing them in the way that you did. Because again, I think that that is a, a, a further reflection for town meeting members and beyond of the fact that you know, our finance committee, as well as other kind of budgetary watchdogs here in town, um, are really making thoughtful uh, decisions that are going to cause, again, the least amount of, you know, kind of palpable harm or damage, it seems like. And uh, so I'm reassured. I hope town meeting mem members are as well. And uh, again, uh, any questions, email them to the moderator, and we'll get them answered ahead of time. And uh, uh, pray for a nice, um, well, I won't say cloudy, but <laughs> nice clear day. Yes. On the 15th. Amen. And All not right. too hot. Oh, yes. Yeah, June 15th. Who can tell? Anyway, best of luck with that. Um, appreciate, again, one last time, uh, you're taking the time with us. We've been talking to Alan Tosti. Um, the chairman of the finance committee, as he has been for a good long while now. And um, we thank him for his time. We thank you. Um, and uh, yes, we all hoping for good weather for you. Okay. All right. I'm James Milan. This is Town Meeting Matters. And we'll talk to you again later.